the RP2350 and Raspberry Pi Pico have some interesting hardware acceleration. One example is the SHA256, which is great for hashing and security purposes. I'm going to show you how to do an SHA256 on a large um, file on the Pico 2, both using the hardware acceleration and in software using Wolf SSL's script library. Let me show you how. Hi, I'm John, your concierge of the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. We use hashing of large data sets to validate completeness, prevent tampering, and support digital signatures. SHA256 is popular as a hashing algorithm, but has not been cracked yet. Handling it in hardware makes a significant performance difference. If you like this video and it helps your learning or your projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video? I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. So what is SHA256 and why is it important? Well, um, it's a hashing algorithm. That is a one-way algorithm that takes a lot of data and produces a short hash which represents that data. And every time you take the same set of data and run the same this algorithm on it, you will end up with this same short code for it. So in the case of SHA-256, all of the data in you know a meg or several megs of file would actually create a 32-byte code. In fact, if it's just a 32-byte file, it you still end up with a 32-byte code at the end. What do we use this for? Well, I mean, this is great for data validation. Rather than comparing the whole of the file to make sure we've loaded it correctly, we can just look at the hash code and say, is the hash code what we were expecting it to be? Oh yes, then the file must have transferred okay. That's good also for anti-tampering, making sure that no one has interfered with a file that we're loading, perhaps what we're actually flashing onto the Pico. And that's something that the Pico 2 and the RP2350 actually have an inbuilt feature. So we can start locking down um, uh, what can actually be loaded onto the device. And digital signatures. So we can, the SHA256 hash code is part of a digital signature. We also need public key cryptography to create digital signatures as well, because we need to know who it came from but we're not going to uh, run the public key algorithm on the whole of the data set. We only actually run it across a hash because public key crypto is really expensive to run. And finally, things like TLS. So when we get a Wi-Fi version of the Pico W uh, or Pico 2W2, we will, when we get a Wi-Fi version of the Pico 2, uh, we'll be able to actually use TLS to actually uh, encrypt our communication and sockets. And TLS uses SHA-256 along with a lot of other algorithms as part of its security layer. We could of course run SHA-256 for a long time and I've used it in the past too uh, with um, libraries like Wolf SSL. And Wolf SSL provide a crypt library which actually includes the SHA-256 uh, algorithm and I'll show you how to run that in a bit. But what we're really talking about is the RP2350 which has got this uh, capability built into hardware so we can actually run an accelerated version of the SHA256 algorithm. Let's see how that actually compares. This video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. It is Wolf SSL's software library for SHA256 that I'm going to use in this video. Part of the Wolf Crypt library available from Wolf SSL in an open source or commercial support model. Wolf SSL also has libraries for TLS, cryptography, secure boot, SSH, and TPM. Go check out Wolf SSL today. The example code I'm going to talk about is, of course, available on GitHub as always. The Pico SHA256 library has these functions that we can use to actually do the SHA256 calculation. So it's about initializing it, then actually adding in blocks, 
and then finalising to get the result back. So over in the repo I've got two projects, the RP2350 uh, native one and one on Wolf SSL that we'll look at in a minute. Um, before we look at those, obviously we need a big data set to actually calculate this SHA256 on. And what I decided to do was actually use a image there of a Pico 2 and uh, it's quite big. And I've then converted that image into a data file, um, into the data.h file, using uh, a bin to C uh, conversion. Um, so we've got a massive um, array there of data. Uh, what's that? Uh, so about 1.5, 1.6 meg of data uh, there to um, create our SSH um, uh, hash on. So let's just have a look at the um, the code here. So within the RP2350 uh, project, um, there is nothing really very magical or different to usual in the top level C make file. Um, obviously, we're telling it that we're going to use a Pico 2 board and an RP2350. Um, but apart from that, everything in there is uh, what we'd see normally. The CMake in the source file is telling it that we want to actually link to the Pico SHA256 library. And it's that library that we're going to use then for actually doing our, our, um, our, our hashing. As Always or commonly, um, I tend to redirect my uh, standard output to be over UART and I tend to use pins 16 and 17 um, to do that because they're nice at the back of the Pico and, and just makes the cabling a little bit um, simpler to my or a little bit neater to my uh, debug probe. So let's have a look at the code actually for doing this and it's pretty simple. Um, so I'm going to import that data file so that I've got that big amount of data. Um, then all I'm going to do really is um, I'm going to set up some timer code around here and then I'm going to uh, use that Pico SHA256 start blocking to initiate um, a SHA256 session. Then I'm going to update and I'm going to basically send all of the data in there in one go. And I'm going to also tell it that I'm going to allow it to do that uh, via the DMA. So pretty much the processor should be free and all of that um, work going on in the background. And then I'm going to finalise the SHA256 here and then print it out and work out how much time um, it's taken. So that's the code I'm going to run. Um, let's try that out and uh, see what the results are. So here's the output from my Pico 2. And first of all, we got the hash code there. And I actually did check this. So I actually calculated this on my Mac as well. And I can just compare the codes there to make sure that they are the same. So it is actually all working. And it's only taking it 114 milliseconds to calculate. That's actually pretty quick for a little tiny microcontroller. We can compare the RP2350's um, hardware version of SHA256 to running it in software. And I'm going to use Wolf SSL's Wolf Crypt library. It has a very similar set of functions to allow us to initialize, um, add in data, and finalize the SHA256 um, data. So for the Wolf SSL version of this, I'm going to, of course, use a library. I'm using this library up here. Um, which is the Wolf SSL library. Um, that's got all of the TLS code in there, but also the crypt code. So um, in the top level CMake file, I'm going to import um, the a Wolf SSL uh, library uh, definition there. Important thing of that is I've um, I've hacked that. My normal Wolf SSL uh, library import is trying to actually give me uh, the ability to have uh, TLS-based sockets within FreeRTOS. So, and this example, I'm not going to run under FreeRTOS. I'm actually running it uh, bare metal. So I have to um, do a little bit of hacking just to uh, take this back. So I've only actually got WolfCrypt in here um, and uh, I, um, 
I'm not using all of the libraries I would usually use in here. So uh, just because it's a one-off, I've I've just uh, hacked that a little bit to give me the libraries I need in order to make this actually compile. Uh, to run Wolf SSL, I, I do actually need to do a little bit of stuff. I need to give it versions of malloc and free to run. And I've done that in here. And I'm just using the standard ones out of the SDK. Uh, this is obviously a little bit easier when you're not using FreeRTOS. And finally, let's have a look at the, the code for what we actually need to do. So this looks very similar to the RP2350 version, really. Um, though we're, of course, now using the Wolf SSL libraries. So, of course, we're going to do a bit of timer setup. And then I'm going to initialize the SHA256 session. I'm then going to update it and I'm going to give it all of the data in our array. And then I'm going to finalize it. And then once that's done, I'm then going to calculate how long that takes. Uh, print out the results of the SHA256 and print out how long it took to do it. So we get the exactly the same result out of Wolf SSL, which is good for a start, but it does take now 779 milliseconds to calculate. So if we compare Wolf SSL uh, as a software version of SHA256 directly against the hardware, there's about a seven times difference between the two. Um, the hardware really does make a huge difference um, to the speed which which we can do this SHA256. Of course, really, in reality, we're not going to be comparing and running them off against each other. In fact, what we choose to uh, use the RP2350's acceleration for SHA256 as part of Wolf SSL. So I'd actually stub the functions and place them so that they're using the hardware accelerator. To do that, what I actually need to do is just uh, write new versions of those um, four functions on the right hand side there and make them use the accelerators on the RP2350. At that point, TLS can actually use those accelerations uh, from within the Wolf SSL library and we can actually accelerate our, our secure sockets and of course any other um, clients of Wolf SSL. So this is a really viable thing to do. Um, I was thinking about doing it for this video, but I really just don't have anything to demonstrate it on right now. So um, I'm leaving it for another time. Using hardware acceleration for the SHA256 hashing gives us seven times the performance of a well-tuned software version. That's quite impressive. It can run in parallel with some of our code as well as we're pushing data to it via the DMA. When we get the Wi-Fi version of the Pico 2 at the end of the year, I think we will see this capability come into its own. SHA256 is used significantly within TLS protocols to secure sockets. If you like this video and it helps you learn your projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there. And I hope to see you there too as well. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like the video if you did enjoy it, and please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.